Welcome to all of you astrology lovers out there. This is going to be another video with me, Virle, and it's about Jupiter, Jupiter in Aries. I want to make this a very short video in uh, to respect the true Aries energies out there. What does it mean in general? I mean, what does Jupiter mean? What does Aries mean? Jupiter and Aries. And then for all the signs, let's have a look. This is going to be... Jupiter just entered uh, in the sign of uh, Sagittarius, the sign of Aries, during this month of May of 2022. And uh, it's going to be there for the rest of the year. Although, although, so it just started around and about the 11th of May, the 10th, the 11th, depending on where you're living. And it's going to dip a tiny little bit in Pisces again at the very end of October of this year. So the very end of October of this year, up until the end of December, up until the 21st approximately uh, of December, it's going to be in Pisces again. So this is true for now, as from now in May of 2022 up until the end of October. And then of course in Next year, it's full on the rest of the year in 2023 that you're also going to have Jupiter in the sign of Aries without dipping with its toes back into um, into the sign of, uh, of Pisces. And it will be there up until, it's not the whole year of 2023, up until the midst of May of 2023. So... That was necessary. This is for the details and for the people amongst you who love those details. But let's break this down. What is this all about? Now, Jupiter, first and foremost, Jupiter is a benefic planet. It's a very positive planet. But of course, any planet is neutral, even Jupiter. So it's what we make out of it. Of course, we can make Jupiter as a very positive planet if it's about expansion and we know our boundaries, then it's good expansion. When we go too far, even Jupiter becomes negative. You see what I mean? It becomes like overindulgence. It becomes like having no boundaries. It becomes like going over the top, like prob promising more. A person with Sun, Jupiter in their chart with an aspect in them, um, you know, in a, in a tight aspect to in a square or an opposition or even a conjunction can go over the top, can promise too much um, and not being able to, uh, to do whatever they say that they're going to do. So you see, every planet has a negative side and a positive side. In itself, Jupiter is a very neutral planet, just like every other. But of course, generally, this is very positive. Why? Because it offers expansion. It's actually very simple. It offers expansion, it offers purpose, and it offers, it's a bit the same as purpose, which is meaning. So whatever Jupiter is in your natal chart, if you find like, and these days, isn't it important to find purpose? There's so many people who are getting depressed because they have a lack of purpose. They don't know what their purpose is and so on. That is a Jupiterian kind of question. Jupiter is also about learning and traveling and uh, having the bigger picture mind. And you can only do that if you have the helicopter view, right? So... But the two main things are where can I expand and where can I find more purpose than normal? So depending when I'm going through all the signs, you will see that in that particular area of your life, you can go for purpose. So, and, and even if you are interested in your natal chart, you can always go back towards doing that or concentrating on that particular house and area of your life to find more meaning, to find more purpose, and to feel more hope. It's also the planet of hope. Now, now combine this with Aries, you've got quite a fiery position here of Jupiter in Aries. It makes me smile. Why? Because Aries has a very youthful, enthusiastic, go-getters mentality. So it's going to be good when we are pioneering, when we are using our courage, because it's always taught the say, and I can relate so much to that, that um, I'm getting actually angry when people say that. Aries people, I have my moon, is, moon in Aries, uh, for instance, 
And people think that I'm not scared. My goodness me, I am, you know, by of doing some things that I'm scared of. I, I'm sometimes terrified. But um, the thing is in the doing, you know, when you're doing it anyway, you're having courage, notwithstanding the fact you're very afraid. And that's the typical thing of Aries. Aries is misunderstood. Aries, people think that Aries has no fear. It's not true. So we are all like going to find more meaning, more purpose, when we are going to be that courageous um, energy that is related to Aries, which is about going for it and not thinking too much. No, Aries is about acting and not thinking. Of course, use your common sense. When this is about going to war and, and fighting and, and, and all of that, that's also Jupiter in Aries, right? It is... Um, it is what it is, but you can always use these energies in a negative way or in a positive way. That's up to us. That's our free will that we have. So, um, but it is certainly a um, energy of movement, an energy of where are you afraid of and do you need some action? Um, where do you need to focus on in a bit more of a selfish way, which is also Aries? And, you know, all that battling stuff and courageousness stuff. But also, it's time not to think so much over and over again. It's time to act. Um, that is also very Aries-like. So this is the combination. And now let's break this down into the 12 signs and also have a look at where Jupiter rules the houses. Uh, I'm also considering that. Now, first of all, Aries people. I'm so glad for us Aries people. Um, of course, this applies mostly when you have an ascendant there. But, you know, if you are like me, having your moon there, or maybe having your sun there, to an extent, it also is a bit true, a bit, uh, it is, but uh, mostly your ascendant. So, in Aries, this Jupiter in Aries, it means for you Aries people out there to focus more on you. Okay, this is just a Jupiter transit, by the way, okay? But you need to focus more on you. You need to focus more on your needs, on your life path, on... Uh, you need to be a bit more selfish, period. Again, take this with a piece of salt, but uh, it's very important because you have the opportunity, the weather forecast is like that, that you have an opportunity to, to expand and to find more meaning where? Within self. Um... Finding more meaning in being who you are and, you know, no bullshit. This is who I am. Take it or leave it. That mentality. It's very Aries-like. Um, and depending on your age, of course, some of you, it will be um, a period of, of studying, you know, higher studies. Because Jupiter is about the bigger picture. Um, you know, studies that connect all the dots, basically, like astrology, like our philosophy, or whatever it is that broadens your perspective, travel, that uh, publishing, it is all very much expansive energy. But it is also good for your relationships because you are hopeful and you are going to exude it more. So that's definitely going to be way more attractive than ever. So you could attract, if you are single, for instance, this is a, this is a fantastic time um, for attracting new partners and how to do it by focusing on you. It really is. Sometimes it's the other way around. Uh, but this is about focusing on you and just do you. Just do you and the rest will follow. Jupiter also rules your ninth house and your twelfth house. These are very spirit. I'm not going to delve into those houses, but they are very spiritual houses. So this is all about your path, your dharma, your uh, and where you feel good about. Be very selfish when it comes to your mind, when it comes to the way that you think, that you don't let yourself drive by, oh, this is what my parents say, this is what my friend says, this is what my husband says, and whatnot. Be super, super selfish when it comes to that. And try to be bold and, well, you will because you have Aries energy in you. Certainly when it's your sun sign, for instance, it's your career. There's novelty there. Use it. When it's your moon, it's novelty around having new emotional securities. And when it's your rising sign, the ascendant, it's all on. It's your whole life. You have opportunity to expand and to grow tremendously. So make use of that. 
Taurus people, this is energy behind the scenes. So for you, it's not so much in front of your face, but this is happening in your 12th house. And that is a very hidden house, a very house of the subconscious. Now I've seen, but Jupiter in the 12th, it's like, um, it's like a hidden treasure. It really is. It is like you feel... Um, and Taurus people, they are feeling people. They are very um, sensual and very feeling-like and very down-to-earth. So, But although they won't understand it 100%, they will have that feeling that, hey, I'm supported. I don't know who's supporting me. You know, it is the unseen world or it is ancestors who passed away or it is God or whatever you want to name it. But I feel like... Um, like I'm getting support out of somewhere. And this is really true for you. So if you are a Taurian that has been going through a rough time, this is like the support that you feel that you, that is a bit intangible, but you, you can feel it anyway. And it's also showing that you will find more meaning in actively pursuing how to relax and how to... To say, hey, I'm going to um, take some time off and I'm going to spend some time alone. Far away travel is um, very much stimulated here, but also doing things by yourself without feeling lonely. So um, it could be those, um, uh, you know, uh, getting on a horse, for instance, and horse riding on the beach, you know, on the shore. I don't know why I'm getting this picture, but anyway, you know, doing something actively that, that still does give you a lot of, um, you know, decontract, how do you say that, you know, uh, enjoying yourself, but also de-stressing yourself. That's the word I was looking for, de-stressing yourself. And you can do that by, by going to nice hotels, by going to a bit expensive places. Um, and if you say, Vila, Vila, I, um, I, I have to, uh, um, you know, um, I don't have that, you know. You can uh, visit a friend or you could uh, somewhere in, in another place. Um, you can be very, very mindful of um, using your creativity when it comes to improving your life in, in a way where you can relax yourself a little bit more and meanwhile having a lot of fun with it as well. Now Jupiter rules your 8th house and your 11th house. So again that 8th house it is hidden and it's about deep deep psychological transformation but that comes from the rest that you're applying to yourself and that you are being selfish with that you say hey I, it's my time now to have a little bit of rest here. And the 11th house is your friendship zone. So use your friendships, um, not in a bad way, of course, by using them and et cetera. No, but use them to, um, you know, connect with those friends who stimulate that, who stimulate your expansion, who have your best interest. And you, the chances are big that you are going to have that. So you could expand your a circle of friends, and they could be more youthful, more Aries-like friends that you are attracting as well, and that support that kind of a bit of a selfish way. So this is very interesting uh, for you as well. Gemini's. Gemini's, this is happening in your 11th house. This is very cool energy for you because Gemini, you go well with Aries. It's a sextile. It's air. You are air. Aries is fire. And the 11th house is all about finding purpose with friends, with associations, with goals for the future. So being very expansive and active with your friends is key here. And um, also exploring there. It could mean that a friend becomes a little bit more important for you, that um, he or she gives you a lot of expansion in, in a very positive way and um, that has your back uh, or in your social circle. Also, you could... Um, could also expand when it comes to social circle and networking, that you are making new friends, more friends, and that you are having that connection with like-minded people. And it will be more purposeful. You will find more purpose in your friends. When you are single, for instance, it could also mean that because 
Jupiter rules your seventh house of relationships and also your tenth house of work. So it could also mean that a friend becomes more uh, than a friend and very significant on the romantic level because it rules your seventh house. So also that is possible for you. And um, also your work. So if you want to expand your work, go out with, in, with um, you know, in circles, in the networking, uh, social media and all of that. Because there could be that one friend, maybe from abroad, maybe from a different culture, because it's Jupiter after all, that gives you that very strong support that you need. Cancer, Cancerians, this is happening in your 10th house. Now, this is important because you are a cardinal sign. Aries is also a cardinal sign. So the 10th house, to most people, this is work. For people who don't have work, it's how you want to be seen in the world. How you want, it's a second descendant, the 10th house. It's also a parent. So there could be one of these three or all of them, or maybe two of them or one of them is expanding. So... When you are the kind of Cancerian that is saying, you know, my work, it's really not, it's not going forward or not what I don't find purpose in what I do. This is an opportunity. You can find way more purpose in your work by expanding, by doing more Jupiterian things in Aries. So by pioneering, by doing something that you've never done before. Even when it's a project it, uh, and that has to do with expansion. Um, international affairs, um, it could mean marketing, traveling, um, teaching, learning, all these things are favored here. Coaching, it's great to, uh, to start, for instance, your own coaching project. And um, Jupiter rules for you the sixth house, which is again your work. Uh, but also the ninth house. So again, there is here an emphasis on you seeing it broader, you broadening your perspective. And um, But if you say, Vera, I'm 73, uh, I'm not working anymore, this could mean that you find more purpose in being of service to society. Whatever that is that you are doing, you know, doing something for society, you can find a lot of meaning in that. You know, whether it is just doing something in the neighborhood or maybe even, and not, and not really in the neighborhood because the ninth house is not really the neighborhood, but you doing something for other people and just doing it because you love to do it, it can give you a lot, a lot of meaning. You know, volunteering, uh, for a good for a good cause, for instance, it's very philanthropic energy. This, so um, and you you Cancerians, you know most most Cancerians, they like to take care of people because it gives them a sense of self and a sense of identity. But again, if you are someone that has working hard in a company, for instance, this is the time to ask promotion. This is the time that um, also when you you uh, are working for a company. Um, a boss could be very, very positive for you, you know, with Jupiter there in the 10th house. They could give you a lot of opportunities, an opportunity to, to grow, to expand. So very, I know it's, it's not really romantic, this Jupiter in your 10th house, but it is what it is. Um, you've got other things going on, by, by the way. But that's watch the monthly horoscopes then if you want to have a bigger picture. Leo, this is happening in your ninth house. It is in a fellow fire sign. This is fantastic energy for you. For the Leos who've been saying, I'm having a lack of hope and, and, and uh, I'm having a lack of expansion, a lack of my understanding of everything or of the bigger picture, this is going to change. Jupiter in your ninth house is super, super expansive. That means that travel, um, publishing, uh, you teaching, learning, um, so you going to school or you teaching other people is massive, massive, expansive, expansive and a lot of hope. So if you've been having, feeling that Saturn in your opposite sign on a relationship level could be a little bit more uh, slow going for you, this is where you can expand. This is where you can find that you thrive a little bit more than usual. And it rules your fifth house of the heart chakra. It, it rules your, uh, and you know how you entertain yourself, how you exp how you uh, enjoy yourself. So you will find more possibilities than ever. A new hobby, starting something new, starting something that you've never done before. Do it. 
you're going to find a lot of uh, not only enjoyment, but also of um, uh, battling your fears because it also rules your eighth house. So Leos, do travel, do expand the mind, do go to a cultural event, um, connect with people from all sorts of cultures and and um, social backgrounds. It's going to nurture your soul. This is a very soul energy for you. Good for you. Virgos, this is happening in a very secretive part of your horoscope, the eighth house. It doesn't mean to say that you're full of secrets now. On the contrary, it means that there is an expansion in, first of all, your psychological growth. The eighth house, when Jupiter goes in there, it means like a hidden support, just a bit like the Taurians, you know, when uh, they have it in the twelfth house. Virgos have it in the eighth house. This is the water house. This can mean that you feel nurtured and you don't know or it's not really tangible but you feel nurtured you feel supported and this is such a relief especially for virgos who tend to overthink things you know it's uh, i'm me being a virgo you know having the sun in virgo can really relate to that trait we sometimes over overthink but jupiter in the eight this is all about uh, you could say feel that support so that you don't have to overthink all of that. So it's just some sort of a hidden support, whether it is by an ancestor that is not here anymore, whether it is you're finding support through occult studies, astrology or whatnot. And by using them in the right way, you know, with, with the feet on the ground, of course, always, always using them in that way without too much of attachment to the outcome. And also, what I've seen many times with Jupiter in the 8th house, it could mean your money, money that you um, get out of a tax return, inheritances, money from your spouse or from boyfriend, girlfriend, where you, live, where you share resources with. There could be an, an expansion there, investments. Um, so this is nice too. It's financial, it's very down to earth, but this is nice. And on another level, I've seen that as well. Because you, Jupiter also rules your seventh house, it's getting more intimacy. And, um, you know, if you are in a relationship or just started a relationship, that could be f you feeling more secure because you can open up a little bit more and show your own vulnerability without being attacked or hurt or going the wrong way or having those fears of uh, people are going to step my step my uh, um, or put a knife in my back so to say figuratively so this is also very nice for your relationships for a closer relationship more bonding with people more connecting is simply intimacy is simply because you show your vulnerabilities um, also sexuality, you know, it's in Aries after all, and Jupiter in the eighth house, it could not only, I mean, intimacy, um, which is a little bit more than just sexuality, it's, it's, it's the best sex, by the way, you know, it's and being intimate on a sexual level and finding an emotional connection, you know, that is... Uh, uh, sacred almost, you could say. So there's definitely possibility for you there. It also rules your fourth house of home and all in all feeling nurtured. Another thing could mean um, as well, because it has to do with life and death. Um, and it also has to do with expansion. So I've seen it many, many times that uh, um, you know, especially if you're a Virgo and you have a Sag rising, for instance, so you could uh, be pregnant, you know, um, because um, there is uh, an element of um, rebirth that you could say, a newness, which is Aries, and that's associated with young children as well. Anyway, very, it's, it's a bit behind the scenes, you could say, for you, but very nice energy. Libra, wow, your relationships. This is good. This is good. This is good for if you are even, let's start with worst case scenario, you're having a bad relationship with someone and you know it, and it's more minuses than pluses in the relationship. You know that you need to end and you're going to end. Jupiter in the seventh means that you're not going to fight over it. You're not going to fight over I don't know, the children or, or the house uh, or whatever, the belongings, it's all going to be smoothly. Or 
smoothly. Um, I mean, of course, it's always divorce or, or disconnecting with someone. But you know what I mean. It's like this Jupiter means it's finding purpose. You know it's for the best. So this could be possible. For most of the cases, this can mean, if you certainly if you are single, but also if you're not single, actually, that, that could mean... This could mean a new relationship. And Jupiter means that you're finding a lot of purpose. So this could be, if it's not a romantic relationship, it could definitely be a mentor who's helping you, who's giving you the bigger picture and you expand because of them. Because they are so expansive and they are so hopeful and positive and it has a knock-on effect on you. So this is very beautiful. And if you're single, of course, you could meet someone who's very Jupiterian and Aries-like. So who's very bold, who's very active, who's very enthusiastic, um, who uh, might be a little bit impulsive every now and then, yes. And uh, who can be foreign because it's Jupiter or at least from another um, cultural uh, background. Now, it also rules your sixth house. So your day-to-day -day work, life and health can also improve because of uh, the Jupiter position in that uh, in that seventh house. So certainly, you know, the for this year, the early born Libra. So if you have between zero and 10 degrees of Libra, you're going to find an improvement in your connections. You're going to find that it's a bit more easy for you. For those of you who have a business, this is good. This means a lot of clients. This means maybe foreign clients even, you know. Um, but uh, clients that have your best interest, that are very enjoyable and that, that give you a lot, right? Very nice energy. Scorpio, your sixth house. Your sixth house, Jupiter there, that means either it has to do with your day-to-day -day work or it has to do with your health. So improvements there. For a lot of people I've seen with Jupiter in the sixth that, I mean, um, in the sixth house, I mean, it is an expansion that can be quite fiery for you because it's in Aries. But it's not like you would say, oh, I'm going to get more work and I already have a lot of work. No, it's not that it's too much. It's more like it gives you more purpose. It gives you more meaning. So for those of you who are looking for a new job, it's definitely possible with Jupiter there in the sixth. And it could be in, um, a job where you have more success, when there is more expansiveness and where you find a lot of meaning. You find your soul. It's like those soul um, jobs, right? Like um, finding your soul job is, is really Jupiter in the sixth house. Could also mean like an expansion when it comes to promotion. Uh, it can, al can also mean that you're going to travel more for your day-to-day -day work and it's embedded there or that you're going to be more active when it comes to work and that's going to create more possibilities. On another level, it's your health. So if you have been struggling with your health, Jupiter here could mean that you find a lot of purpose in your path towards healing. And with Aries, it means in pioneering and doing things that you've never done before. Um, and of course, you have to know and, and, and decide what is best for you when you're treating um, some, something that is good for your health or an illness. You know, um, Aries is about fire. Aries is about doing. So it's rather about you doing things yourself than uh, waiting until, you know, something is going to appear. It also rules your second house. So again, the food that you eat uh, is here very important and can have a very good effect on that. Also your self-worth, working on that as well. And the fifth house is the house of self-expression. So that could also indicate that you are going to be a bit more childish and a bit more saying to yourself, hey, I'm going to do that and I'm liking it and it's my hobby and take it or leave it kind of mentality. Sagittarians, isn't this amazing? Isn't this amazing? I love it so much, you know, especially when you have a Sagittarian rising. And I do have a Sagittarian rising. I kind of feel it already, you know. This has just started and I feel it already. It's about Jupiter is you, which is your ruler, and you are in the fifth house. So this is all about, hey, this is me time. This is me time. It's all about, I'm going to put attention on me, 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 a bit more selfish, do whatever it is that you love to do. Um, so that you feel your heart chakra opening up a little bit more. And by people 
people who have, um, that's why they say, you know, um, Sagittarians, Risings, they like to sport, they like to move and certainly do that um, because uh, the cusp of your fifth house is Aries, which is all about action and you feel alive because of that. So whether it is fitnessing or um, whether it is running or whatever it is for you, it needs to be something fiery and it's, it's certainly going to give you more purpose. So also, I, and I also can relate to that, but basically um, that is an expansion when you have children, that there is an expansion going on with your child. No matter how old your child is, he, he or she could be in a phase where they're expanding and in a very positive way. So it's, uh, that's, that's good as well. You know, seeing your child growing also, you know, gives you more purpose. Ha, huh, that's why I have children. <laughs> that's not the truth. It's, it's not that you have children because they, oh yeah, you want to see them grow. It's one of the purposes, but... Um, it really can give you a good feeling and it really has a knock-on effect on your heart of opening up a little bit more romance. This is fantastic energy for the single Sagittarians out there. This is, especially if you have um, this year uh, between zero and 10 degrees, this could mean a, a new romance. You know, it's where it all starts. It's the love house. It's the house where a relationship starts, where you, find, you, you feel like Ooh, your heart is going all fiery. It's, it's definitely that. It could mean someone who has your best interest, you know, Jupiterian. He, he or she could be from another culture, not necessarily. They could have a different background, you know. You are from uh, maybe a high class, society, whatever. Um, I mean, you know, on, on a form level. And um, the, the, the other person could be from, uh, you know, people who um, have... Um, on a financial level, always been struggling. That is what I mean by cultural differences. You could attract someone from a totally different background, but that gives you a tremendous amount of meaning. And key here is playfulness. So if you are looking for a relationship, a new relationship, focus on your playfulness. Focus on the things that you love to do that gives you this uh, childlike kind of vibes, you know. Uh, what can that be? Um, you know, being playful, going to the beach and just have some fun there. No matter what your age is, you, you just say, look, I'm going to play at the beach with, with just a, a ball and, and just swim in the water. And, or whatever it is, doing something very enthusiastic, bold, and uh, do that and you can attract uh, a very nice love affair. Not affair, I mean, something that grows far, further, but... Um, uh, certainly a good romance. Now, Jupiter also rules your fourth house. So you, because you're all doing those new exciting stuff, also, by the way, it could mean a new project. So if you want to start your own business, I've always seen that. Uh, Jupiter in the fifth house, starting your own business, expanding and, you know, uh, pioneering here. Do something that you've never done before that, that um, is pioneering and... Um, that could be very, very interesting for you, for your growth, for your expansion. But again, it rules your fourth house, so it's also going to give you in some sort of way some emotional, a uh, feeling of emotional well-being. Capricorns, very important. You are as well, just like Aries, a uh, cardinal sign. So this is happening in the core of your horoscope. The fourth house, Jupiter in the fourth house is lovely, but again on an emotional level. So people are not going to see it. Unless, when it's about your home, you can go um, sell, buy, sell a home, buy a home, and go to something that is bigger. You know, Jupiter is, and Aries is uh, quite fiery, so you could really do this quite quickly, buying and selling, and to have more space, literally, and a lot of light as well. Now, but for a lot of you, this has to do with emotional support that you finding more. I remember when Jupiter transited my fourth house, we ended the renovations and I started to enjoy just time at home more. And that's also Jupiter in the fourth, literally enjoying your home more and um, but also on a level of feeling emotionally supported, nurturing yourself. You know, it's really about that. 
And it's the way you think as well, because uh, Jupiter rules your third house and your twelfth house. So because you have shifted, expanded the way that you're thinking, you're feeling more secure and also very spiritual. Uh, Jupiter also rules your twelfth house. So it also has to do with you feeling spiritually nurtured, you feeling, and because of that, you kind of enjoy yourself better at home and also in your own body, you know, it's emotional uh, security, not only just the house, it's emotional security. It's a lot about that, you improving, or you studying at home, you learning at home, you teaching, or you being the teacher at home, it's that as well, you know, with Jupiter there in your fourth house, because it does rule your third house of learning. So you could be doing that um, as well. Aquarians, this is your third house. This is going well with your energy. Aquarius is air and Aries is fire. So having this in your third house can mean an expansion from your skills. I mean, the skills that you, um, you know, the skills that are a bit difficult to learn that, that, um, and that are a bit of a challenge to learn and that you haven't done. Um, so that is something new because of uh, because it's airy. So you could be going to school again or learning something new um, or learning how to drive, for instance. And it takes a lot of courage because you are a bit afraid of doing it, for instance. But it could also mean if you have a business of your own, an expansion of that, an expansion of the social media, an expansion of the marketing, an expansion of... of um, you growing tremendously on the social media there. It could be that as well. And Jupiter rules your 11th house and your second house. So again, social circle is very, very important. Can also mean in the neighborhood. You're, you're um, finding more meaning out of a neighbor. You, you find yourself all of a sudden saying like, yeah, it's good that I have a couple of neighbors here and I, and I feel really, really excited about them and we can do lovely things and we can share and whatnot. And, um, but also siblings, it could mean that a sibling is doing better and because of that it has a good effect on you as well. Or your connection with sibling improves and expands. Short trips as well, you could do more often short trips and you're tremendously going to exp and do that with friends because it rules your 11th house as well, Jupiter. And it's going to Expand, um, give you a good feeling about self as well. Jupiter also rules your second house of, of self-worth and of, um, you know, your resources as well. So it could mean that whilst you are doing more Jupiterian in the third house kind of media and uh, all of that, that your resources, um, you know, that you gain because of that. So certainly a very enjoyable energy and um, Pisces, Pisces, last but not least, this is happening in your second house. This is nice. This is nice because the second house is self-worth. The second house is also money. So for those of you who had a rough time when it comes to money, Jupiter in the second house is a indicator, an indicator. It's not, you know, 100% security, but it is an indicator of improving your financial situation. And also improving your self, uh, how, how you see yourself, right? It's um, ruling your 10th house. So it often has to do, of course, with if, uh, work. So um, finding a new job or an extra job or, or a promotion at work. And um, that is very much in the, in, in the astrology for you this year when Jupiter goes into Aries. And it also rules, of course, Jupiter, your ancient, it's your ancient ruler. It's the first house. So it's all about you. It's all about that feeling, that confidence, feeling that um, you do matter. And it's also good to um, show that. And not in a bossy way, kind of way, but in a way of, look, this is um, my value. And probably because of that, because you're going to do that, and because you feel that you're owning it, you're going to show it as well at your workplace, and therefore promotion and finding a better job is definitely on the horizon for people with, uh, especially with Pisces rising, um, with Jupiter there in your entering your second house. So it's not so much 
uh, as it's not so much relate, related to relationships, it's a bit more related on the tangible things of life, which is resources, which is uh, work, uh, which is um, a parent as well. You know, you could be having a parent that is in some sort of way more supportive towards you or more doing well uh, because of certain uh, circumstances. But uh, whatever it is, you... Um, are in that second house. So you could be really appreciating the five senses in life, you know, the good foods and the good drinks and the beautiful clothes. It could mean that you, um, because of the hard work that you have been doing, that um, on other levels, I mean, go and look up the uh, monthly horoscopes. or um, And I'm going to do the monthly horoscopes very soon for, uh, for June. But um, it certainly is...